All right, here we are going to calculate the efficiency of a machine, and the general formula for efficiency is that the efficiency of a machine equals the work you get out of it divided by the work you put into it. And the idea is that you always end up getting less work out than you put in. You know, you never get everything you put into something. So the efficiencies will always have values uh, less than 1 if you're keeping it as a decimal, or if you convert to a percent, less than 100%. Right? You can't be 120% efficient. It doesn't really make sense. So um, these should always be smaller than this. If you're doing a lab, it's possible that you can get some errors that cause it to be greater than that, um, but it should be less. Um, so that's really all there is to this, is plugging into this formula. Um, so in this case, um, this machine uses 1,500 joules of energy and gets 780 joules of useful work out of it. So this is our work out, 780, and 1,500 is our work in. So the efficiency is simply 780 divided by 1,500, and that will give it to us as a decimal. So again, sometimes that's sufficient. The decimal answer is 0.52. The efficiency is 0.52. We usually like to think of it as a percent, so we'll just multiply it by 100, and we'll say that this is 52% efficient. And a lot of times it helps just to see, just do the eye test, does that make sense? If you were to invest $1,500 into something and you'd get 52% back, not, not a great investment, but let's just say that was the case, about how much would you expect back? Well, half of 1500 is 750 and that's pretty close. So always just do that eye test, make sure it kind of makes sense. All right, so this is a similar problem, except now we are given the efficiency. The efficiency is 27%, which, again, we should probably convert to a decimal right away. We divide by 100 to make a decimal. Um, just like we multiply by 100 to get a percent, they tell us it releases this much energy. So at first it may not be clear if that's work in or work out. But then when it says how much can be converted to useful work, useful work is another way of saying the work out. So that means that the work in must be the 130 million joules. And so what we're really looking for is the work out. So our formula again is that the efficiency equals the work out divided by the work in. So if we plug in 0.27 equals work out over 130 million. And my advice anytime you have a problem with fractions and you're trying to solve a variable is to cross multiply and divide. So we'll put 0.27 over 1. We'll say cross multiply. So work out times 1 is just work out. And then 0.27 times this. So we're just going to multiply 130 million by 0.27. And when we do that, we will get this number here, which is 35,100,000 joules. And again, you always want to make sure this makes sense. We get an efficiency of 27%, which is about a quarter. So we should be getting about a quarter of this back. So in your calculator, if you wanted, you could just do 130 million divided by 4, and see if that is a ballpark answer. And when I do that, I get um, 325, 345, I get um, 32 million five hundred thousand. So that's pretty close. So anytime you have a percentage that's an awkward number, it usually helps to estimate what you think the answer will be. So you'll get about 25%, which is awfully close to this. So it checks out. And now we get to the problem that more often than not people get wrong. Um, but let's just write down our variables again. So our efficiency is 15% or 0.15. Um, it's used to perform 200,000 joules of work on a container. How much does the crane need to use in order to do this? Um, so this is where it might be a little unclear. Is this work in or work out we're talking about? Well, we're lifting the container. And it says that 200,000 joules of work is done on the container. So that, that implies that it's useful work, or work out is 200,000. So the crane's 15% efficient. What we need to know is how much work needs to go in. And here's the thing. If we want to get this much work out, we need to put more work in. And so we need to sort of figure out how to do that. Um, and so we can do this the algebraic way, for sure. 0.15 equals uh, 200,000 
over the work in. And if you followed my advice earlier, we'll cross multiply. So 200,000 times 1 is 200,000. 0.15 times work in is 0.15 work in. And then the solve for work in, we divide by 0.15 on each side. And if we do that, that should get us our answer. So we'll do that, and I get the work in is 133, or rather 1,333,333 joules, the work in. But again, here's where we have to just make sure this makes sense. We want 200,000 out, and we have to invest uh, almost a mil over a million. Does that make sense? Well, let's see. 15% is really close to what? 20%. And 20% is one-fifth approximately, right? So what is one-fifth of this number? We can just divide it by 5 and see if we're close. So one-fifth of this is 267,000. I'm rounding. It's pretty close. Um, you know, 20 and 15 are a little bit of a difference. But Always just get some ballpark numbers in your head. Use percentages that you can convert to fractions to, to see if these things make sense. 15% of this number is 200,000, so that makes sense. You only get 15% of what you invested um, when the efficiency is that low. Um, and so again, your work in should always be greater than your work out. So that's pretty much how to do it. Um, until next time, I'm Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.